Thank you for listening to the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast with host Clara and Jimmy Hinton. If you're new to the podcast, please subscribe and share so you never miss an episode. Search for us on your favorite podcast app, or you can find the podcast on jimmyhinton.org and findingahealingplace.com. Please rate our show, subscribe, and share so we can spread the word. If you would like to support us and get exclusive rewards, go to patreon.com slash speaking out. Find a tier that best fits you and join as a patron of the podcast. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to this week's podcast with hosts Jimmy Hinton and Jimmy's mom, Clara. And special guests, uh, we have with us Megan and Dominic Benninger. Uh, Megan and Dominic, hello. 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 Hi. Uh, they're, uh, Megan and Dominic uh, were mentioned in our podcast with Krista Brown, and uh, you guys are, are definitely heroes of mine. Um, you are very good at putting your faith into action. Um, you came up with an idea to have uh, a database within the Southern Baptist Church when the when the uh, Southern Baptist Church wouldn't step up to the plate. Uh, they have all kinds of excuses for not having one. And so uh, Megan and Dominic started BaptistAccountability.org, and that launched earlier this year. Is that right? Mm-hmm. I think it was, February? yeah, February. I think it was February. Yeah. Okay. February. So yeah, this is a recent database and you guys, uh, Krista actually mentioned it whenever we, uh, spoke mm-hmm. with her on the podcast. And I think you guys now have, is it over 300, um, who are on this database? Now? 475. Oh, How many? Wow. 475. 475. Wow. 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 That's increased dramatically. Well, I think in that might include enablers and, yeah. um, what do I want to say? There's another category. Credibly oh, credibly accused. accused. Oh, okay. Yeah. Credibly yeah. accused. Three, convicted. 372 convicted, 46 covered up, and 72 mm. credibly accused. Wow. wow. 476. That's incredible. And um, there are well, many more that we know of right now that we just manpower can't get them in right. fast mm-hmm. enough. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, isn't that telling? Isn't that telling? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I want to give you, I'm going to give our listeners a little bit of a background for who you guys are, how we connected. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys tell the story, but you know, I'll tell our listeners, first of all, I met, um, I met Megan and Dominic by uh, when one of their church members or former church members, I guess, cause you guys have since left the church mm-hmm. um, in Pennsylvania. You guys are just a couple of, couple hours down the road from us. Um, I was called to consult with your church. Um, and there was an issue of some church members finding out that your pastor, um, had a criminal history of sexual abuse of minors. Uh, the church was unaware of that. And, uh, one of your deacons had reached out and contacted me. Um, and and really against the will of the elders of the church, um, and so they kind of reluctantly agreed to uh, to have me consult the church, uh, and I did that. And and when I was done, you know, I gave my list of recommendations. When I was done, I had the very strong sense that this church was not going to follow my recommendations, which is exactly what happened. Uh, usually, you can tell. Um, and so you guys and the other couple, which I think it's okay to say their names. Um, yeah, they said, they the, told us. Actually. Okay, good. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, Mark and Nicole Saylor, a uh, very good, very good couple. Mark was the first one who had contacted me. And uh, to, to Mark's credit and to both of your credits, um, you guys handled everything phenomenally, I thought. Um, from start to finish, I thought you guys were full of wisdom. Uh, there was no overreaction. Uh, there was no dramatization of, of the information. It was just, here are the facts and we need, we need to confront this and we need to deal with this and walk the church through this. And you guys not only got radical resistance, Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you started getting harassed. And I think you guys, you two, especially, um, got harassed by church members and, you know, we're kind of painted as, as these people who hated the church and you were just there to cause division. So I don't want to tell your story. 
Um, no. I'll let you guys tell it. <laughs> You're right. That was pretty good. <laughs> and in fact, there's a, there's a USA Today story, uh, The Tongue is a Fire, mm -hmm. uh, that was written by an investigative journalist, uh, a very good article that was written into the, uh, the abuse cover-up at your former church. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys um, tell a little bit of the backstory and, and how that led you guys to start uh, the database that you started February of this year. Sure. Well, go ahead. So I guess going back all the way, um, we were we had been members at Oakwood Baptist for 12 years and <clears throat> we knew there were were some rumblings between the there were five pastors total in this tiny church i mean the church was only 100 people on the best sunday but maybe there were five pastors which seemed a little much for that small church right. um, and we knew there was conflict but we didn't know what was going on and <clears throat> then suddenly the head pastor the senior pastor left which was really unusual because it was his father's church before him and i mean he was invested in this place i mean very you know involved in our lives and everyone's just really a good yeah. pastor as far as yeah, we, he you know he did a great job shepherding yeah. the sheep so um, to speak yeah. but we didn't know everything that was going on but anyway so he suddenly left he was called somewhere else which was very obvious to us that he wasn't <laughs> that's it's something i mean maybe he yeah. was too but something else was going on yeah. and so after he left the sermons from the other pastors got really weird really fast um it was all almost always about stop you know no gossiping i hope you guys aren't lying this church isn't what it used to be you're not loving anymore um, really get lectured from the pulpit. It's really, wow. and I actually, uh, had panic attacks, like full on <laughs> panic mm. attacks. Mm. And I, I didn't know why. I mean, I knew the sermons were off, but I didn't realize like what that did to me. We actually were in a cult in college for two years, mm. which Dom has written all about that. We have a website, churchtrauma.org, that he yeah. has written. If anybody's interested in that experience, <laughs> he's written yeah. all about that. So I think it was that spiritual abuse from the past. And I know, Jimmy, you've talked about triggers being helpful in pinpoint. Well, this is one of those cases. It really was. Yeah, because triggers are telling a story. They're telling you that something's not right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I could, and, and I stopped being able to be in the room during the sermons because I would just, I mean, my temperature would go, my heart rate, I'd feel like I was going to pass out. I mean, I just, mm. I'd have to go outside and just walk around and not be in there. Yeah. Um, and then we decided to take a sabbatical from the church just because we didn't know what was going on, but we felt we needed to be just distanced. Take a step back. Right. Yeah. Take a step back. And so we did. And after we were out for a couple, when we told them, we stepped down from all our leadership positions. Don was worship leader. I was nursery director. I mean, we were very involved. Right. Um, stepped down, told them we're just taking a break. Didn't even tell them why. <laughs> we're just like, we just are. So we we're out for a couple of months and I was having a conversation with Nicole Saylor. Um, and, <clears throat> tell, you know, we had talked a lot you know, about what's going on, trying to figure out what was going on with the pastors and why is everything so secretive? Um, and I just said to her, I said, I feel like I shouldn't even say this out loud because I don't have any evidence of this, you know, no reason to believe it other than I feel it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. From Pat and I, I said, you know, maybe it's just the cult and maybe I'm overreacting because of the cult. Maybe, you know, but I wonder if there's sexual sin behind this. Interesting. I just, mm, I don't yeah. know. It just I can, yeah. intuition, <laughs> I think, but maybe from past experience. Right. And, because that was a part of the cult for us. Okay. Not yeah. for us directly, but I mean, there were issues of, sexual you know, abuse. spiritual abuse and sexual abuse in the cult that we'd come out of back in the 90s. And, yeah. you know, symptomatically, you know, the, the symptoms seemed very similar. And I don't want to speak, you know, for you, but yeah. you know, it, it seemed like a similar situation. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so Nicole said, um, well, do you know about Don Foose's background and conviction? She said conviction. And I said, no, what conviction? Um, and she said, well, just do a background check. So we did. Yeah, <laughs> we, we ran it we, on all the pastors. It, we, we did all the pastors. We just thought, why yeah. not? We paid the money. Yeah. We're like, this is sure. worth finding out. Um, and we started Google searching. It was like, she didn't want to say much more right then, but we Google searched. And the first thing that came up was his, the revocation of his teaching license, where it declared him a danger to the children of the Commonwealth. And that was so blatantly, like the first thing that came up when you search, we're like, how is this? Yeah. This is right here. Public. Nobody knows this. Like what? And wow. it was the Department of Health or uh, Education's Education. website. Like it was a legitimate yeah. government website. So huh. then we were, I mean, of course. Just dumbfounded. Dumbfounded. Yeah. And then we waited for the, the background check. And um, so as it turned out, the sailors had known, but they had been told, as everyone else had been, that it was a false accusation. And and Nicole says this all the time now, like, I can't believe that I just believed that and bought that and, you know, and just didn't question it further. And I think that was everyone who knew. To some extent, I give them grace in that they believed his story. He lied to them. But I think it's a good lesson for everyone that, you know, trust, but verify trust. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> they should have, you know, especially the pastors. I mean, when they hired him, especially when they put him in charge of the school, yeah. the superintendent of the, the church or school. I mean, you know, his office was what, three, you know, uh, five feet right away from, the, hall, the, girls from the girls room. bathroom. And, you know, he had close interaction oh, no. with children. You know, I can't no. say on a daily basis, but he did, like, drive the school bus for the school sometimes. And he served as a substitute teacher at times. Yeah. And there was a, a letter that came, the head pastor that had left had written a letter, a five-page letter, which we, by the way, published on that church trauma site. If anyone wants to read it, it is mind-blowing. I don't know if you read yeah. that, Jimmy. Yeah, that was actually um, – I don't remember – I don't remember who had sent that to me, but when I when I had consulted with the church, that that letter came back to me after the consultation. Uh, you know, within a few days, I had received that letter. Yeah. And um, you know, my you know part of my recommendation was because of the interactions that he had and accusations that he had. That was it. Um, while he while he was superintendent, I mean, these were current accusations. Right. I said. This is absolutely reportable. I mean, right now, this right. is reportable. And I said, and by the way, I'm a mandated reporter. So regardless of uh, whether you guys report or I report, somebody's making a report after, mm-hmm. after yeah, the right. conversation, you know? <laughs> so and, we, we and, actually, and it was reported. And we actually had reported um, before anything, like as soon as we found out pretty much, um, we reported to child line, but nothing was done with that because we didn't have the letter at that point. All we knew was he had a conviction. He was serving as pastor and they didn't, that's legal. So they did nothing with that child line didn't until that letter came out and it said, yes, he had children on his lap, straddling his leg, Mm -hmm. pushing them by their butts on the swings. He, he had an accusation with a mentally handicapped, a young woman mm-hmm. at the school. Um, it just goes on and on. Yeah, you lift the rock and there's all this stuff under the rock and you're like, what is this? And, you know, we immediately had started researching everything we could on the topic of, mm-hmm. you know, sex abuse in churches. And we found your stuff, which was why we knew to right. even what to do. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> Otherwise we would have been lost. No idea. I mean, yeah. what do you do with this? And, you know, I was a, a former board member and, you know, I reached out to other board members saying, look, do you know anything about this? And I didn't want to just come out and say, do you know anything about blah, blah, blah. And, and, you know, ABC, like, do you know of any allegations or any, you know, criminal charges? Oh, well, I heard rumors, but we never did anything about it. And, that was by and large the response from those that 
did know, they either believed it was a false accusation or it was just rumors. And so no one, you know, did anything about it. Um, and, and I mean, I reached out to my sister who, who at the time ran a daycare in Pennsylvania and, you know, just bounced the circumstances off her. Like, is this, you know, she said this, this shouldn't even be legal. Like, how is this even possible? Right. That, you know, someone convicted of, of child sex crimes is in there with children without a background check. And, you know, our, our panic, you know, was ramping up and, you know, we started to ask hard questions of, you know, of church members, church leaders of, you know, this, this isn't right. You know, this is potentially, you know, this with mandated reporting laws and, and, it, is this at the very least legal and right? And then, you know, the, the benchmark of, of Christianity, right? I mean, should we do the bare minimum of what's legal or should we go above and beyond that to protect children and to protect congregants? I mean, we were just so blown away on every level w- with the whole circumstance. Well, and yeah. I wanted to say too, I just wanted to point out the sailors turned around right away like they got it they're like oh my god they absolutely got it (laughs) they got it they turned 180 did all the right things um and we actually said to them well we're not at the church we haven't been in the church a couple months we're kind of not even there and we just wanted to wash our hands of it actually (laughs) we were just like you do it it's your church (laughs) (laughs) at at this point but that's not how it turned out it didn't work out (laughs) we were we got very (laughs) mad But, but they did kind of take it on in the beginning, went to the leadership, you know, laid it all out and said, you know, Megan and Dom found this out and they're already talking to some people about it, which they freaked out then, of course. And they, you know, emailed us right away. Or did they email it? Yeah, they emailed us asking for a meeting, right? I, I don't recall. I think they, emailed, it, they but, initiated it. You know. And then we had a meeting with them the very next day. Um, that was. Unbelievable. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you heard every excuse that you could imagine. There were theological rationalizations of why this was okay. Um, you know, God forgives anything. You know, he's been washed. He's, you know. Yeah. And, you know, um, well, everyone has sin. You know, has. would you want your sins put up on the bulletin board, you know, at church? And, yeah. you know, and there were. Sandusky, don't forget. Oh, yeah, the Sandusky, you know, that was a rationale. Well, this wouldn't have been a big deal except for, you know, Sandusky and, and the laws changed. The law, wow. Almost kids like these days. that shouldn't have happened. Oh, and kids these days need to know everybody's feel business. Like they need to know everyone's business. Like because of the internet, you guys feel, you know, uh, like you need, you're privileged everyone's information. But in our day, we didn't, you know, ask questions like this. People's past was their business, you yeah. know. But turned out one of the men who was primary in that argument actually had his own accusation. We found out then. Oh. I'm not sure if you knew about that whole. No, I I didn't. Tell you that story sometime. Yeah. Wow. There's so many layers to this. And to be in this meeting, you know, and and to hear all of this. And it was, you know, our our, our goal was, you know, you've got to, you've got to air this out. You've got to be transparent. You know, you have to tell the truth about everything, you know, on this circumstance, because, you know, this is problematic on a lot of levels from the legal side, all the way to, you know, is this right from a Christian perspective? I mean, there's, there's so many things wrong with the situation. Yeah. And I, I, Oh, go ahead. I, 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 well, I think this is an important detail too, and you guys will know who I'm talking about. I don't know names, and that's yeah. not really my point here anyway. But you know, somebody uh, who was on the elder board uh, is is or was in law enforcement, and yeah. and, and, and he, yeah. he was the most adamant in saying, you know, he looked at me and said, "I will stake my job on it that there's nothing reportable that." this was all in the past that there's, you know, he's absolutely no threat and we need to move on. And I thought this is dangerous. You, you are, you represent law enforcement and these people who don't know the law are looking to you as an example. And you're setting a really bad example. Um, And, and of course nobody else is going to question him. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I felt like that put everybody who was in that meeting um, except for me, it put everybody else at a disadvantage because yeah. I don't care if somebody's a cop or not. <laughs> I mean, you know, the law is the law, right is right, wrong is wrong, and you just deal with it. You know, but most people 
people do trust cops, you know, yeah. and think they know the law. It's a it's a flaw, right? I mean, we assume people in authority, whether it be a pastor or a police officer, you know, that they are good and that they are doing what's right. And, and unfortunately, that's not always the case. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So that yeah. meeting was interesting. And but we just kind of kept going after that and then yeah. started telling more people. And then when then they had him. Well, he had re- he, Don Foos retired almost immediately. He had he went on a missions trip to the Philippines, and on that trip, he scrubbed his the website and you know, yeah, all the kind yeah, of that stuff. Was weird. That was weird. <laughs> but then when he came mm-hmm. back, he retired with no explanation. Um, but of course, we had kept talking. So then the gossip got so bad that they had to have him confess to the congregation. But it was only because of gossip. He should not have had to do that. You know, um, so he confessed in front of the congregation to about a 10th of what happened. I don't know. Well, very much. Yeah. Very minimized. We there. Um, yeah. I mean, we were gone by that point. Right. I mean, yeah, but from the sailors and people who were still there, right. It was very minimized and, yeah. um, that, and it was very expected that everyone would forgive him. They had prayer. Every you know, asked people to come up and lay Lay hands on them and pray. pray. Some people, some people didn't. And I know one person in particular I've talked to said that, you know, she did not go up. And so when that was over, he actually targeted her, came right up to her and said, are we good? Can I have a hug? You know, (laughs) wow. I mean, it seems like it was very forced. Again, to be fair, we weren't mm-hmm. there for that meeting. Yeah. Um, but it was un- It was really sad. Yeah. And then, and, oh, go ahead. Do you have to say no, this? I mean, you continue. Well, then I was going to say, then he was gone, gone. Okay. Because he originally was going to stay through July. You know, he was going to retire, but he's going to stay three months, whatever. And they did talk about a severance, although that didn't happen. Thank goodness. Um, and then the this part of the story to me is a really important part. The involvement of the regional, it's not a state association, I guess, but it's the Keystone Baptist Association. So it was, you know, an overseeing organization, although, although in Baptist churches, right, every church is autonomous, so they can't do any discipline. And I had called him early on. And he said, yeah, the only thing I can do is if the pastor asks me, I could uh, act as a mediator, but they'd have to ask me. I'm like, well, if all the pastors are doing what's wrong, what do, what do we do? Right. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And there's he, no accountability whatsoever. Yeah. And he said, well, if you want, I can call them and ask. Well, anyway, that nothing ever came of that, but he ended up becoming the, um, what do you call it? Interim pastor yeah. for a little bit for, for a little bit until they brought in an outside organization which was a joke too but the this man who was the director of that association had known it turned out before don was ever hired at oakwood he knew that he had a background he didn't do a background check either but he believed the story you know that it was a false accusation and when the reporter asked him did you ask questions did you ask anything to find? and he said something to the effect of no I don't like to put unnecessary things in my mind almost as if my mind is pure I don't want to hear wow you know uh anything that would <laughs> yeah poor little guy yeah <laughs> meanwhile children could be being raped but at least your mind right. was pure. <laughs> yeah um that was really concerning to and me and that's quoted in the article that's quoted I mean, in he, the article. he did you know speak to to uh the usa today and and you know it's mind-numbing and you know from there like we didn't see or hear a whole lot but i think the but, next experience we had was when we learned that you know he had moved on to another church and yeah. was preaching there. Don Foose had moved on to another church. Yeah. So much for retirement, huh? And yeah. And, and that was just 20 minutes down the road, also under the umbrella of this Keystone the Baptist same, Association. Yeah. And so they, you know, just moved that, it, and the only person that knew 
we reached out. We, that ended up being a big thing. Because when we found that out, I went scorched earth. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. this yeah. is unbelievable. And I did a big Facebook and Twitter posts and said, please share. And it, yep, it I remember that. Far. Boy, did we get we in trouble for that. that. Yeah, um, we took different approaches. Like he, you took, you know, that approach. I did. <laughs> and, you know, I took the, you know, I'm going to send a, a letter or an email if you'd rather to the, because Foos was like a guest speaker. Like he wasn't, it didn't appear he was on staff, but, you know, yeah. I sent an email to the leadership of that church. And make just sure said, they Look, knew. This is, you know, this is what happened at Oakwood. And, and our, our heart, our goal is, you know, I don't want this to wreck your church like it wrecked Oakwood because they literally went from what a hundred people down to maybe 10. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was such a a chaotic mess. Like the whole board resigned at Oakwood. Uh, All the church leaders left. Um, I mean, almost all. well, resigned as leaders, pastors, if you will. And, you know, it was a mess. And what did that do to the congregants, you know, and I, I didn't want that to happen for, for this church. And so. So it turned out that the the associate pastor and the children's director didn't know because Dom and this, this is, I, I think this is a good thing we learned from this and that we have kept now in everything we've been doing, always email groups of people, <laughs> because if you email just the pastor, they can bury it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was the best thing we had done in that situation. Yeah. Unknown, not, I mean, we thought through a little bit, but we didn't realize how good that actually was yeah. because that pastor did probably, he did know, I think, I'm not real clear on what he knew, I don't know. but the associate pastor and the children's director did not. Definitely did. And that mm-hmm. made a difference. And, yeah. mm-hmm. and then, um, anyway, it was months that Nicole and I were back and forth with the, um, State, there's another state association, Baptist Association and Keystone. Anyway, we were back and forth with people trying to get, say, you know, shouldn't he notify his church? And they're like, well, all we can do is suggest it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The yeah. Autonomy. And they're like, we can't tell. And I'm like, well, in a Baptist church, supposedly the congregation are the decision makers. They have the most power. Right. I said, so why then, if the congregation or the decision makers, they're the ones that need the information, not the pastor. Um, right. But they, they still were like, well, we can't do anything. You can, but we can't. And we're like, so we keep putting our families at risk because we have people coming after us. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> we're the ones that have to do this, not, yeah. not the Baptist associations, not the yeah. Southern Baptist right. Convention. or. Right. Um, so anyway. It ended up that what made the difference in the end was I finally got fed up and I just one day was very. And this was recommended by God. It was. So it was. You were were Jesus in the temple overturning tables. (laughs) It was. But you're right. But it, but Boz recommended it. So that's our disclaimer. We <laughs> had recommended it with Oakwood and we didn't do it there. Okay. Yeah. I did say to them at, at, at this other church, I said to that pastor, okay, the, all the state association can't tell me if you have informed your congregation or not. So it will be up to you to let me know. And you have until next Monday, I think it was. I don't remember what day. I gave him five, like five days, and said, "You'll like this long to notify your congregation." And if I haven't heard from you that you have, and here uh, by name, you need to say his name and the names of his convictions, yes. not just somebody mm-hmm. did something. Yeah, which is what right. happened at Oakwood. And I said, "Do that by this date, or else I will find a way to do it." And it, n- crickets from everyone. And by the way, everyone is copied in this up to. Todd Unsicker, I think, who's real high up in Southern Baptist. Yeah, super high up. I tagged yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crickets. No one said a word until the night. You gave him till Monday. Whatever I gave like him. It was late, late Sunday, Sunday night. evening. Yeah, late Sunday evening. He, fu- he finally emailed and said, everyone has been notified. And I said, can you verify by name? And, by-? and he said, yes. And then I did have a woman because of my Facebook post that I was in touch with her from that church. And so I verified she had three kids there. She was ticked. She was in in the article too. Mm -hmm. Um, And she did verify to me. She said he came to her house that afternoon 
and he must have told people in person, I guess, but he, he had told her that afternoon. So she said, yeah, I think everybody does know now, but yeah. that's what it took. It took just saying, if you don't, yeah. we will. Yeah. Isn't that a shame that you have to, you have to force their hand Yeah, because it, it's that old, you know, we, we can't do anything about it. And, you know, the other thing that's really troubling in, in church culture, and I've, I mean, I've seen this for nine years now um, since I started speaking on this, is that the people who warn people of legitimate concerns, it's not like you guys were making this up. It's no. not like you were going around mm-hmm. saying, you know, Don might have done this. Like the dude has a criminal record and confessed to his crimes, spent time in jail, you know, like the guy has a criminal record and had his license stripped from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It's not like this is an innocent person who you're just going around whispering rumors. Right. When when people who warn other Christians of uh, people who are a threat, a legitimate threat, it's we who who get chased off. Yeah. And you know, you guys had all kinds of threats and like I remember you um posting and sending me messages about people like leaving package these mystery packages on your on your porch, <laughs> you know, like all this bizarre weird. stuff. And some of that we were like we don't know. I mean, was it something right. like we were just yeah. terrified at that point because we did yeah. have a little bit of stalking. We had people sending we nasty emails. We got doxed Twitter. on Twitter, meaning they yeah. copied all our personal info personal and cell info. phone numbers. And it was copied and pasted, <laughs> it looks like, right out of the Oakwood directory, mm-hmm. like on wow. Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, like when I reached out to, um, like what Oakwood's approach was, was, look, if people come to us and ask us what happened, we'll gladly tell them, but we're not going to say anything unless someone asks us. So when I reached out to the pastor, you know, down in, in Carlisle about, you know, Foos being a, a guest speaker there, you know, I copied, I said, look, you know, Oakwood will be willing mm-hmm. to answer your questions. And I copied the board on it. Um, yeah. And I got a letter of rebuke from the board for doing that. Yeah. And yeah. how dare you put our name on that? It made it look like we were in support it of it. It implied them. that yeah. they were in support of me they, reaching out to that church. So they didn't yeah. want to be in support of notifying right. another church. Yeah. I mean, the bottom yeah. line is do nothing and say nothing is what they all wanted from us. Yeah. And they had, and and then it came out later that right when this happened, when you emailed him and I did the Facebook post, they called some emergency meeting and they had the state director there to answer questions. At Carlisle. At Carlisle, but only with, a, it wasn't with the whole church. It was just with the few people they wanted to know. Was it? I don't yeah. know, like leadership or something. I, I don't know. Yeah, it was, I, never yeah, I, don't, I don't remember who all it was, but it wasn't the whole church. Yeah. But anyway, so the, you know, it's yeah. like. <laughs> it's crazy. I think there's a gross misunderstanding where there's this toxic church culture that says anybody who calls other people out who are legitimately abusive people. Right. You're just stirring the pot and you're just, you know, let sleeping dogs lie and, you know, keep quiet for the sake of Christ and the kingdom. And that that's kind of the church culture mentality. Yeah. And it's so in opposition to the teachings of Christ. I mean, again and again, yeah. reading over the parable, you know, of the Good Samaritan. And it, I, I always find it interesting that the person that came to Jesus asking, you know, what must a man do it was a lawyer, you know, uh, some translations say it was a lawyer, you know, uh, someone well-versed yeah. in the law. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that that whole parable, you know, the Good Samaritan lining that up with victims of sexual abuse or victims of spiritual abuse, which I think is is very yeah. wrong in, in congregations. Like, how are we as believers and followers in Christ? How are we fitting into that story of the, you know, the parable of the Good Samaritan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When people are spiritually bleeding out and we're, yeah, we're stepping around, we're stepping over them. Yeah. 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 And are we doing the bare minimum legally? You know, I mean, so many times and and not just, you know, our experience, but so many other experiences shared by, you know, Krista shared a lot about this, right? Churches tend to do the bare minimum as required by their lawyer um, to, to minimize risk. Right. And, and yeah. are we called as believers in Christ and followers in Christ to do that bare minimum? Well, I think we're called to lay our lives down. 
lay it out there yeah. and take yeah. risk, you know, and one of the, the primary things in all of this was, yes, there was risk. There was risk in, you know, speaking out. If we can protect one child, just one child, was that risk worth it? I, I think absolutely it absolutely. was. And I think once yeah. you get into the database and people see, like, it it wasn't expensive. It wasn't, you yeah. know, yeah. it's doable. It's very doable. <laughs> well, I think we we can uh, we can take a break here, and uh, we're we're gonna we'll split this into two episodes. But um, yeah, I I want to get into the database and talk about that because I'm I'm intrigued, and um, you know I know we had a lot of back and forth emails uh, prior to you guys launching this, and um, you guys made this happen really quickly. Our listeners needed to to know that this wasn't like you know five years of planning this out. You guys made this happen really really quickly. So. Um, anyway, uh, our listeners have the backstory uh, in this episode, and we thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll catch you next episode. Thanks again for listening to today's episode. Thank you to our patrons who make the podcast possible. If you found it helpful, please follow on Spreaker and search for the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast in your favorite podcast app. Be sure to hit subscribe and rate the show. If you believe in what we do, consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron and check out the cool rewards our patrons receive. Share with your friends and tell the world. Join us in speaking out on sex abuse so we can change the tides and prevent abuse.